All right. Okay, well, hi everybody. I'm Sergeant Arnold, um, Air Force Officer, a Sessions Recruiter. Uh, been in the Air Force for 18 years. And today we're here to give you a public health briefing. With me, I have Sergeant Branham, so he'll do his intro. How's it going, everybody? I'm Master Sergeant Branham. I've been in the Air Force for 20 years. Uh, I'm an aircraft mechanic by trade. This is my second time around in recruiting service. I did enlisted recruiting from 2009 to 2013, returned to force, um, worked on jets again, and then uh, coming towards the end of my career, I decided to uh, come back into recruiting service so I can help people such as yourselves out. So that's my story. This is Sergeant Rivera. Hi everyone, I'm Sergeant Rivera. I've been in the Air Force for just over 15 years. I'm also an aircraft maintainer by trade. Um, had the opportunity to do an enlisted recruiting um, and now moving over towards officer sessions recruiting, which is where I'm at to try to help everybody out and get them the information they would need to make that informed decision to come into the Air Force. Cool. So on, on the line with us, we also have Captain Shapiro, Captain Patel, and Captain Sly. Um, they're all uh, Air Force public health officers, so I'll let them go ahead and introduce themselves. Hi there, everyone. I am Captain Shapiro. I am currently stationed at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, which is in Tucson, Arizona. I have been in the Air Force now for two years, and my background is I am a doctor of veterinary medicine and master of public health degree holder. Uh, before I joined the Air Force, I worked in emergency and general practice veterinary medicine for a bit. And then I transferred over to the USDA Food Safety Inspection Service and worked there. And then I applied for and was accepted by the Air Force. And so after going to OTS, I was stationed here at Davis Monthan, where I'm the second officer. So it's a big enough base to where we have two public health officers here. And then um, I'm moving on to another base because I would have been here three years next summer. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Captain Patel. I have been in the Air Force for a little over two years and actually went to OTS with Captain Shapiro. So we have known each other since then. Um, we actually just, uh, did the accession process together with the same recruiter. So it's kind of how we met as well. But um, I am actually stationed at Whiteman Air Force Base, which is in Missouri, a little about an hour and a half outside of Kansas City. It is a global strike base. So it's, it is a little remote compared to other bases um, in bigger cities like Tucson. Um, before I joined the Air Force, I actually was a professor in public health at UNLV, so I have a master's in public health and a PhD in public health. So I was teaching as a professor and doing research before I joined the Air Force. And um, I am really glad that you guys are interested in this and we hope we can answer any questions that you have. And just like Captain Shapiro, I am also going to be leaving next summer as we do tend to move every three years or so. Hello everyone, I'm Captain Jasmine Sly. I'm currently stationed at Ramstein Air Base in Germany. I have been in the Air Force also for two years. And uh, prior to that, I worked in public health, but just in a, a different kind of role. I did program management with Cleveland Clinic, and then I also did clinical research as a research coordinator with Cleveland Clinic and uh, Department of Veterans Affairs in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, very happy to be here today. Public health is a fantastic field. I am a master's of public health uh, holder as well. Uh, so that is a, that's been a, a great way for me to enter into the Air Force. I was very interested in the job description, which are uh, presenters will get into a bit later. All right, so for our agenda today, we're gonna go over eligibility requirements, position descriptions, um, advantages to being a public health officer in the Air Force, training and professional growth, Air Force benefits, the next steps, and any questions. <clears throat> All 
All right, to go over some of the eligibility requirements for fully qualified public health officers, uh, you have to be able to pass a military physical, you have to be a US citizen, you have to get your commission by the time you're 42 years old, and then you have to have one of the following degrees with a minimum 3.0 GPA. So you have to either have a DVM or VMD, so a doctorate of veterinary medicine accredited by the American Veterinary Medical Association, or a master's in public health, so an MPH or an MSPH, plus a bachelor degree in nursing, so like a BSN, uh, biology, entomology, microbiology, or zoology, accredited by the Council on Education for Public Health. Or if you are a current or previous enlisted public health technician uh, and you're applying to be a PHO, you must have earned your bachelor degree in biology, entomology, microbiology, or zoology, and you have to have a CCAF in public health, uh, environmental medicine technology, or allied health sciences, and seven years of experience in the public health career field with three years of job experience in AFSC 4 ECHO 071. So some of the things to look at for your eligibility requirements. This one here specifically discusses um, HPSP. So you have to have a qualified military physical. You have to be a US citizen. Uh, the age cutoff is 39 when it comes to the scholarship programs that we have. And public health uh, HPSP applicants must be enrolled or accepted into the following programs, depending on your annual requirements. So uh, doctor in veterinary medicine, degrees must be from institutions, programs accredited by the American Veterinarian Medical Association. Applicants must also maintain a 3.0 GPA or greater on a 4.0 scale. All right. And then the eligibility requirements for HPSP and entomology. Um, you have to pass the military physical, be a U.S. citizen, same age cutoff, which is 39 for HPSP, and then requires an acceptance in a master's of science or a doctorate um, in entomology. And then uh, also entomologists, they do have their own career field, so it's called the medical entomology field, um, but as a specialty under public health, you could either serve as a public health officer or a medical entomologist. All right, so the position descriptions. <clears throat> so we have disease surveillance and prevention services, which ensure airmen and their families are protected from communicable diseases at home and while deployed. Uh, this program specifically focuses on STDs, tuberculosis detection and control, animal bites, and community health surveillance for outbreaks and other reportable diseases. Uh, we also cover food safety and public facility sanitation programs uh, involving the continuous inspection and monitoring of food and public facilities on Air Force installations to prevent foodborne food illness outbreaks. Uh, while deployed public health officers and enlisted technicians ensure deployed horses don't get sick from eating or drinking contaminated food and water. Horse health management and medical readiness programs uh, make sure our airmen are healthy and medically fit for deployment. This program involves tracking annual health assess assessments, immunization status, and specific laboratory and preventative health testing. In addition, this program conducts extensive pre and post deployment health surveillance to ensure airmen returning from deployment don't have malaria, psychological health issues, uh, poor health outcomes due to environmental exposures, or other serious conditions that require medical evaluation and treatment. Uh, they also vec uh, monitor vectoring surveillance and entomology programs to ensure Air Force communities and deployed airmen are protected from diseases transmitted by insects such as the West Nile virus, Hanna virus, Lyme disease, and malaria. It's important for Air Force PHOs to know the types of diseases carried and transmitted by local vectors, as well as vectors found in high threat environments like Africa, Southeast Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East. Um, they also monitor occupational and environmental health programs to ensure worker safety and protection from hazardous chemicals, noise, and other workplace hazards. Uh, Air Force PHOs manage occupational exams and hearing conservation programs for both active duty airmen and civilian employees assigned to that installation. They also conduct surveillance for occupational injuries and illness to detect and prevent workers from being harmed. Thank you much. Do you mind if I jump in? Of 
course. Absolutely. So Captain Shapiro here, um, with regards to the position description, just to kind of put it into a little bit more manageable terms. Um, so here at Davis Monthan, we have a big public health presence because we have a large occupational health and a large deployment health section. So pretty much we're broken into community health, which in that is like was mentioned with STI screening, animal bites, making sure that nobody's getting rabies from like a javelina, which is a problem here. Um, and we have food safety and sanitation where we go out and inspect all of the food in the food court. We make sure that any food trucks coming on base aren't serving undercooked meats, that sort of thing. And then our deployments are how we get our people out the door. So we make sure that they're healthy and ready to go for wherever they're deploying to. Occupational health for us, if you've seen the transport V, then you've seen the boneyard where there's a whole ton of airplanes out and giant fields here. Um, so what we do is we make sure that the employees working there don't have any kind of health issues from the paint fumes, from um, the concrete that they're working with, and obviously from the noise from the aircraft. And then another big section for us is right now COVID. So that kind of is under our community health, but pretty much as a public health, public health officer, what we do is we manage all those programs. So you don't actively go out and do food inspections on a daily basis, but you have to know how to do them and you have to know the codes and you have to know how to answer the questions. So it's very managerial, very oversight, very administrative. Um, so while you might not be doing those things in the position description day to day, you still have to know how they work. And uh, Captain Patel and Captain Sly, I'm not sure if you have anything to add as well. Yep. Um, what I always tell people when they ask me what does a public health officer in the Air Force do, I always think of it like think of the base as um, a community or a town or a city, however you want to say it, and then you are the health director of that actual base. So you're there to protect everybody from foodborne illnesses, track diseases, anything that you would kind of see on the outside in a general um, health department. You're just kind of your own little mini health department within the base. And of course, we do work with a lot of our community partners to ensure that we're all on the same page. We're, we're helping each other out. So it's a lot of that liaison um, stuff and a lot of managerial stuff like Captain Shapiro said you're there as their director as the head person to help make sure that these programs are running and all of the little small health district stuff is being done. The only difference is that you do deployments which is not something that you do on the outside at all. We deploy because we have um, active duty members guard reserve whoever needs that assistance to be able to get them out the door. And I'd just like to add uh, for the managerial part of it, some skills that you may want to cultivate that will greatly help you in the position uh, besides building partnerships and collaborations with local public health uh, entities and also just other departments outside of your day-to-day -day environment is public speaking because briefings uh, is a large part of what you do as a public health officer to higher leadership. Awesome, thanks for the insight, I appreciate it. All right, so some of the advantages to being a public health officer in the Air Force, um, you have no people to hire or train, uh, and then no equipment to buy or maintain, and ready-made clinic or work center, depending on what type of public health you're doing. Um, you have an established patient base and you have uh, comparable salaries uh, with additional pay depending on um, you know, your commission type. And then access to excellent colleague consultations on a daily basis. And uh, you can either work in a small, medium or large setting inside or outside of clinics. And I'd like to speak to this specifically from the veterinary side. Um, so for veterinarians who are thinking about this, whether or not you have a master's of public health uh, in addition to your DVM, 
one thing that I found is when I was on the outside, I was looking into local health departments, into jobs with the CDC, and it can be a little bit difficult for us veterinarians to get our foot in the door on the human side of things. And that's one thing that the Air Force really offers you, whether you're going to stay in for four years or 420, is that it gives you the opportunity to work on the human health side. And it really broadens your One Health understanding to be able to have that veterinary side come in and work with the human side. And I am right down the hall from a whole bunch of human doctors, and we collaborate on a lot of things all the time. And so it is a great way to get your foot in the door if you are interested in expanding outside of just veterinary public health and into the human side. The Air Force is kind of the only opportunity that I've found that's really a for sure, yes, you'll get experience in the human medical side of things. Over. So some of the benefits of becoming part of the Air Force is excellent starting salaries with regular pay raises and promotions. You receive 30 days paid vacation each year and continued education opportunities. Tax-free housing and food allowances are also things to look for and comprehensive medical and dental care for yourself and your dependents and opportunities to live and work and also travel worldwide. Uh, generous retirement programs are also things that we have available. All right, <clears throat> the Health Profession Scholarship Program. So the HPSP is an Air Force scholarship designed to alleviate the financial burden associated with medical school uh, or like DVM school, stuff like that. And it allows you to dedicate yourself to learning. So what it does is it covers 100% of your tuition. You'll pay for all your books and required lab fees. Uh, and then they also pay the student a monthly stipend that's currently sitting at about $2,500 a month. So in essence, you're getting paid to earn your degree uh, debt-free. All right, so training as a public health officer. As an Air Force public health officer, you'll be part of the Biomedical Sciences Corps, or BSC, and a highly respected member of the world's premier healthcare teams. <clears throat> you will enter active duty and attend an eight-week commissioned officer training program at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. Um, and this course is aligned with a four-phase approach, orientation, development, application, and transition. Some of the next steps to look forward to would be to complete your initial appointment with one of our team members and obtaining your source documents for the required uh, appointment. So some of those you can see are listed there. Uh, if you have questions on those, please let us know. The next steps would be to engage uh, with our pre-processing representatives that would be assigned to you. Uh, to schedule your physical appointment. That's for your medical clearance. It's not physical fitness as some think. And then uh, once your physicals are completed, um, you then move on to step three, where you complete your application package. Details on the items to obtain will be given to you in a checklist form, where you can then uh, consolidate everything with our pre-processing representative. Once your application is complete, you can, you can schedule your official interviews with an Air Force uh, con consultant. And then finally, you'll complete a quality check on your package to submit your uh, application to the board. Right now, as you see off to the right here, the important dates show rolling. That's simply because as soon as your application is completed, we're currently allowed to submit your application forward. So the only things holding you back would be the completion of your medical, your application bill, and your physical. All right. So if you could pull up the video too. So some of the questions that we typically get from the field, um, and I'll just go through these and maybe you guys can all answer, that would be nice. Um, so the first one that we typically get is, what does your typical day look like as an Air Force public health officer? So I'll start us off. Um, so recently, especially with COVID, I've been going to a lot of meetings. So a lot of my day revolves around planning for different medical-based operations. So whether that's COVID testing, um, COVID contact tracing, insert blank COVID thing here, there's a lot of meetings that I go to and a lot of planning. 
which is really interesting because there's a whole lot of people in that room at once and so many different subject matter experts put in all of their opinions and all of their knowledge and so it's definitely a great learning experience and it's not just COVID because if you join that might not be as big of a thing by the time you get to where I'm sitting right now and so outside of COVID on a day-to-day -day basis like I said it's a lot of administrative work and so if my for example if one of my public technicians goes on a food inspection and they see something and they come back they'll ask me about it and so they'll bring up the code that we use and we'll go over it and we'll decide what the appropriate thing to do if that establishment is. If they fail, do they need a key uh, inspection, that sort of thing. So meetings, emails, being the subject matter expert, being the consultant for your technicians uh, is a lot of my day-to-day -day job, but it is something that having worked in USDA, speaking specifically to the veterinarians, uh, working in USDA, FSIS before this, I do more in a day here in the Air Force than I did in my almost um, so I'll add on to that. Um, so my day to day, something I'm gonna uh, is really different too, just like Captain Shapiro said. Something I'm gonna tell you guys is that you guys are coming in at a good time because COVID has kind of propelled a lot of us public health officers and public health itself into the limelight before this. Um, a lot of people on the outside of medical really don't know what we did. They didn't realize we did all of these things for the base, for the community, for our members and our dependents and anybody that comes on the base. It was um, you know, very much like, oh, we didn't know you guys did that. We just thought you guys did this and this. So it really did propel a lot of us into the limelight. So now you are really the subject matter, matter expert in a lot of things. You'll be surprised how often I get an email or a phone call about just random stuff like pigeon poop in a hangar. And what do we do about that? Is there a disease that goes with that? So it's just um, little things like that all have always come up, come up now. So there's never really a dull day. You might have some days where it's very quiet, but there's always something that you're being asked about. You're, you know, even if you don't know the answer, it's your job to go try to find the answer or find the person who can help you get the answer. So there's always something happening, whether that is a food issue, an MRE storage issue, someone had an exposure in a shop. So now you are helping to go investigate that occupational exposure. You know, we have last minute deployers going out and they need a briefing done or, you know, get um, testing done over the weekend and get them cleared out. Those are all things that always come up. And it's not always a Monday through Friday job. Sometimes you do have to work on the weekend. Sometimes you have to work longer hours, but it's not always like that. And it definitely keeps you busy. So if you're one of those people that wants a kind of a fast paced life and being able to lead a group of people, not just manage them, but lead them, this is definitely a position for you. And just to add to that, one of the best things about being a public health officer uh, day to day, in addition to the briefings, you're the subject matter expert, you get to uh, really respond real time as uh, captain, uh, as both captains actually were, were mentioning, being able to kind of respond real time. COVID really did propel public health into the forefront. Um, one unique thing that I've been able to participate in is the OAW humanitarian support mission. Um, that's something we didn't really foresee, but your day kind of turns as the mission uh, to support the mission as necessary. So being able to be that public health SME, uh, that subject matter expert, and really inform the design of the public health response was something that was a fantastic opportunity and across different bases, other public health officers that are supporting that mission are having to do the same and really rise to the occasion. Each location is gonna provide something different. You really never quite know what your day is going to be. And that is amazing.
Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, so another question that we get is like, what, as a public health officer, what kind of population are you actually serving? Is it only active duty? We so, support active duty. Okay. Oh, we support uh, active duty primarily, uh, active duty dependents, which are often spouses and children, stateside uh, retirees. You will also see them overseas as well. Uh, again, it, it does kind of depend on your mission and your location, but primarily active duty and those active duty dependents. So for us here in uh, sunny Arizona, we see a lot of snowbird retirees. Um, and so that is a population that we serve. And that is something that we have to take into consideration is the influx of people of a certain age with certain needs into our hospital. And uh, the other thing, like I mentioned, is we do have the boneyard here. And with that comes a lot of civilian employees. And so here at Davis Monthan, we're not the largest by any means uh, as far as civilian employees go, but in addition to active duty reservists and spouses and children, we also serve a big GS uh, and contractor civilian employee. Yep, and just kind of echoing what the both captains said, retirees, active duties, we actually have a guard unit. So we do serve a guard and reserve Air Force unit. But we also have a guard army unit that we also serve and help out with. So it's um, kind of tri-service depending on where, what base you're gonna be at. There'll be a base where you might be serving you know, Navy personnel or, or Marine personnel as well, not just Air Force. So, you know, being able to know their rank, their structure, their procedures, their protocols, their culture is always important whenever you go to a different base. Awesome. Um, so my last question for you guys uh, that we typically get from the field is, uh, how often do you guys end up deploying? And what does a deployment look like for a public health officer in the Air Force? So I haven't deployed yet. Um, we usually don't deploy until we are after two years in. We actually have to make sure we get all of our training first. So there are requirements for a public health officer. So you know, don't assume that you get in and you'll deploy right away. You, they do want to make sure you're prepared and ready to be able to deploy and be able to go into a setting because you will be maybe the only public health officer there and you have a small team to work with. So usually we don't do that until we get our upgrade and that's after two years and after we've done our public health officer school and some other courses. Um, So I also have not deployed. Um, one of the benefits of the Air Force is maternity leave. And so uh, I have allowed the Air Force to expand my family life. So I've been on maternity leave um, and the year post uh, since I joined. And also there's, as Captain Patel mentioned, the two year time span where you actually get credentialed essentially. Um, however, my major, so my boss, uh, the flight commander here, has deployed. Um, he's deployed three times in his career and he's been in about 15 years. Um, and what it looks like for him is when he's deployed, you do a decent number of the basic things that you do at the base. So you still do occupational health and hearing, you still work with STIs and communicable diseases. Invariably, someone will have a potluck and it will make a lot of people sick with a foodborne illness. So you still investigate that um, and you still do deployments because people are coming in and they're going back home. Uh, some other things that we don't do is like travel medicine because people aren't taking like leisure vacations when they're on deployments. We don't see those other populations like retirees, beneficiaries, that sort of thing. Um, but you do do a lot of the basic things that you do in clinic. Um, you're just a little bit more hands-on because as far as his experience goes, usually it's just yourself as a public health officer and then a public health technician. So you don't have the same large team that you might have at your base. And so you do do more hands-on things and work with your technician a little bit closer than you might if you have, like we are of 20 plus uh, technicians and officers here. Uh, so that is something that is kind of an, in, a neat experience is that you get a lot closer with your technician and you also do a lot more hands-on things.
And Captain Sly here, I have also not deployed, but I will be deploying uh, very shortly. And what I am preparing for is the disease surveillance, the food safety and the public facility sanitation that, that hands-on as both captains uh, were mentioning is something that I'm preparing for. I will be going to a team that is pretty small and so it will be myself as the only public health officer, but there will be a higher ranking public health emergency officer uh, that I will be supporting. Awesome. Well, good luck. You'll have to update us when you come back how it was. All right, so I don't have any other questions. Um, thank you so much. Uh, for showing up and being the Schmees of public health officers on here today. Uh, we really appreciate it. And did you guys have anything? No. All right. So we're good. We're going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.